Rhyperior is currently never used competitively, but with its massive base 140 attack, along with solid physical bulk, this thing can definitely still be a monster. Gen 9 actually gave a few buffs to Rhyperior in the form of Temper Flare, a 75 power fire move that's powered doubles if the last move failed, along with Supercell Slam, a 100 power electric move to cover for water checks when you don't miss. With its abysmal 40 speed, Rhyperior does struggle with being a sweeper just because it's super slow, but we can run Rock Polish to double our speed and all of a sudden this thing's zooming. Its ability Solid Rock allows it to take 3 quarters damage from super effective attacks, and we can pair this with the weakness policy to double our attack stat when we're hit by a super effective move. Stab Earthquake along with Stone Edge hit extremely hard, and when fully set up, Rhyperior can catch people off guard. So here's the thing, making notably slow Pokemon fast is fun, and Rhyperior is a chonky boy, but we're gonna be able to get nice and sparkly and running quick with that rock polish. It feels like Rhyperior these days does not get enough love, and that is what I'm here for. Now if you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k, and I would love to have you as part of the journey, and with that, let's go ahead and jump into the battle. Alright, so my dude's gonna go ahead and lead off with Young Shoulder Pads. The Armor Rouge comes out and I have the Glamora. Now this team's main mode is to function as trying to set up Toxic Spikes and then get like a Merciless Sweeper Toxapex to do stuff. Shout out to the last video, if you haven't seen it already, I definitely recommend it, it's super fun. Regardless, I'm gonna lead off with the Glamora just to be able to set up my Stealth Rock here and as a lead Armor Rouge, I don't really know exactly what Buddy wants to fire off here, but they're just gonna go right for a nice little Psychic that actually does not knock me down to my Focus Sash, which I think is fun. And uh, that's going to allow me to at least know that I can outspeed and then set up the Toxic Spikes here. Now, the reason for that is because I know they don't have a Poison type to be able to come in and soak those up. So, they're going to have to deal with uh, a nice little, little sp spiked Lego over there that's going to poison your feet. So, as this does take care of the Glamora, I'm kind of fine with that. It didn't seem like it had a huge role in this match. I did get up my Toxic Spike and the Stealth Rock, so... I can take this bit of momentum to allow a nice little revenge switch into the High Dragon. Now, this thing, I, I figure, you know, Armor Rouge generally is going to be a weak armor set. So as I go for the scale shot, I'm thinking it's going to drop the defense every time. And as it turns out, they're actually working with the Flash Fire instead. So this thing's armor is in fact not weak. And as I do get the 5 hit on the scale shot, it's not quite going to be enough to take care of it. Now, at least the good news is, as I do get my nice little defense drop and the speed boost that comes with it, because I'm just straight up flinging scales off my body, they do have the coverage with the Aura Sphere, which I can take nicely because the Dragon don't go down easy. And at this point, I can uh, I consider trying to set up a Dragon Dance here, but then I'm like, you know, I'm just going to play it safe. Go for another scale shot. I'm now at plus two speed, which should make me faster than literally everything they have. And physical High Dragon is... Super fun, nobody expects to see this thing as a physical attacker, and scale shot in general with a loaded dice, anything that can get that is just, it's gonna be good. So, that takes care of the armor rouge, which is fun. And now, as they do have the revenge switch in, I kind of get to see what they want to do to deal with this. Now, again, I'm faster than their entire team at this point, and they decide to go ahead and stick bug my ass. They go into the spy dops, and I'm thinking, okay, after some stealth rock, this thing gets poisoned, and it doesn't look like even a five hit scale shot kills this thing, depending on if it's like a defensive set. So I'm like, you know what? Maybe they silk trap here. I can try to take advantage of that and go for a dragon dance. We're out here getting greedy with our weird little puppet, muppet ass hands. And as I go for that dragon dance, it turns out they do not silk trap, and they actually just go right for the X scissor. And I, yeah, I got stick bugged. The, the Spy Dops does take care of me. And that is, uh, it was just kind of a shot in the dark at that point. I didn't know what this thing was going to do. Listen, I don't know. Spy Dops, it doesn't attack things. So, I don't know. That <laughs> is going to knock out the dragon. But now it is going to allow me a nice little switch into the Hurt and Urchin. This thing is here to uh, get critical hits on every single attack as long as they are poisoned. And this Spy Dops shall be shown no mercy. So, this thing actually is faster than me, which is fun. They actually go for the Rock Tomb, which drops my speed even further. But I can now just throw some sludge at the guy, and that definitely takes care of it with the crit. So, important to note, I actually do in fact not have Venishock on this Toxapex here. I switched it to Venishock right after this. I was playing around with this thing's moveset and messed it up. But regardless, most of the time, a nice little Sludge Wave crit does the job anyway. So... They do have a bird who's flying high as hell up there, and right above the old toxic spikes, and without this thing being poisoned, I both know that I cannot take care of it, and also a thunderbolt hurts. So, I'm able to switch into the big man. I'm going to end up going into the Rhyperior here, basically just to soak up a nice little T-bolt, 
And that's exactly what happens. This thing's role on the team is to be able to you know, switch into electric types like that. And then not a lot of the time people expect this thing to get nice and sparkly. So what I'm going to do as they actually just go for the air slash, I am able to take that extremely nicely and then go ahead and polish my ass up. I'm feeling aerodynamic out here and we're looking pretty quick. Now, while I am pretty damn quick with my speed double to this point as I'm actually max speed, I decide to go for a second rock polish. The reason for that is because I know that I can take attacks from this Kilowattro all damn day long, but also after two rock polishes, I'm now going to be faster than the Meowskarada in the back, and that feels pretty good. So now I can just go right for the Stone Edge, and I Stone Miss, because when has anything ever hit with the Stone Edge? Never. So it turns out they actually miss a Hurricane, and we go miss for miss there, which feels good. And now, as uh, I get a nice little second try, we put on the prescription glasses and the Stone Edge is able to take care of the Kilowatt Rolls. So that thing being out of the way honestly is great. Super fast Mon and just annoying to deal with. And now they decide to go into the Palafin. So important to note, this Palafin is regular form. It is not superhero ass Dolphin at this point. And while it does have the Jet Punch, I'm feeling like if I can go for the Terra Ground, it's going to be just normal super effective. And I am pretty damn bulky out here in a Jet Punch from a regular Dolphin. Actually should not end up killing me. So, as I go for that Terra Ground, I put the damn Earth on my head as if, as if this thing needed to gain any more damn weight. Um, but, again, I am faster than everything at this point. They actually don't go for the Jet Punch, and you are going to face the consequence of a nice little Terra Boosted Earthquake. And even without my weakness policy, we get a nice little, little artificial boost from the extra Ground Stab, and that takes care of the Dolphin, which feels pretty good because Palafin is broken as hell, and now it's dead. So at this point, they're down to two Pokemon left. They have the Mouskarada here, and they also have a Garganacle in the back. But we are prepared. Again, you can see how shiny we are after that Rock Polish. I got two of them, which is going to allow me to outspeed here. So uh, they're actually going to go ahead and commit the Terra. They're going to end up going with the Terra Grass on the Mouskarada just to you know, boost up a Flowery Trick even further. But listen to me very closely. You're going to have to outrun the damn chonkiest boy in the game to be able to get that off because I do outspeed and a Stone Edge with a crit actually ends up knocking out the Meowth Garada, which is wildly satisfying. So we break his Crystal Ass into a million pieces, and down goes the Kitty. So now we're extremely well positioned because the final Mon being one of my least Pokemon, favorite Pokemon to deal with, freaking being Garganacle's weird Minecraft looking salty ass, does not want to deal with an Earthquake, especially coming from a, a nice little extra stab from the Terra. So obviously I can outspeed. And we're a couple of big boys. I feel like we would be homies if we weren't battling against each other. But business is business. Baby, an earthquake does take care of it. And that is going to finish off the match. So, listen, sometimes all you got to do is make the big boy quick. And then you get yourself uh, a nice little dub. So, that's going to do it for game number one. Rhyperior is very fun with rock polish. Because I feel like nobody sees it coming. And uh, that's going to bring us into game number two. So, I've been having a lot of fun with this team. Just because it feels like a pretty well-rounded build. And there's kind of... There's answers to a lot of things in terms of what I can have set up. If it's going to be the Merciless Toxapex, there's obviously Rhyperior being able to get quick, but then also uh, the Hydreigon there. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into the next game. Hey, go ahead and do me a favor. Double check and see if you liked the video. I bet you probably haven't because you probably forgot, but hit that like button because it really does help out the video and uh, I appreciate it. So I'll lead off with the Glamora because I'm here to set up some Toxic and they lead off with the Slowbro, probably expecting my lead, which is uh, a nice prediction on their end, and I have to get this thing out of here. So, at least with this being a Slowbro lead, I can switch out pretty freely into the Alola Ninetales because while I both know that I can, you know, threaten this thing with a Freeze Dry, also set up my Aurora Veil, it means that they're not going to get up the Stealth Rock so I can keep my Focus Ash intact on my Glamora back there because my main goal is to get up those T-Spikes and try to play around with that. So, as I go into the Ninetales here, I take a bunch of damage from a Psychic and I kind of figure that they probably switch out here. And that gives me a nice opportunity to set up the Aurora Veil. So that's going to be great support for the team in general, but Rhyperior especially because even with Solid Rock uh, reducing super effective damage, now I can get that weakness policy to activate pretty easily. So as I go for the Moon Blast, I actually miss, which is hilarious because that means <laughs> Glaceon got the miss there because of its Snow Cloak ability, which I gave it with my own damn snow. But then they actually go for a Mirror Coat, which is like a hilarious turn there. We both were just like, what the fuck just happened? So... <laughs> With that, I actually decide they're probably likely to just click the Mirror Coat again, as they don't have much that can hit the Alolan Ninetales. So I take this opportunity to just actually switch into the big man himself. I go right into the damn rock, and at this point, I know they're going to hit me with a something like an Ice Move, or even the water coverage with the Water Pulse 
is going to do a whole bunch of quad effective damage, except for the fact that I'm Solid Rock behind an Aurora Veil, and that is going to go ahead and pop the Weakness Policy. And not only that, but I'm actually now able to get off the Rock Polish. So that is an ideal turn here, being able to, you know, take an attack nicely, double our speed and our attack. And now it's time to just do some damage with the guy. I can now just go for the Earthquake, and that is just straight up going to take care of the Glaceon. So it's actually... The snow went away right in time for that thing to lose its defensive boost, but I don't think it's going to be able to live that anyway. So, they do of course have one of what used to be one of the better defensive checks to a Rhyperior like this, except for the fact that now we get access to Supercell Slam. So, I'm going to end up going for the Ground Terror. The reason for that is if this thing is max HP and defense, it uh, has, a, I think, a chance to be able to live in even uh, a plus two Supercell Slam. Plus. You never know if it's going to miss or whatever, but I go for that Terra Ground just to cover for the fact that this does not kill. But we absolutely roast and toast the dude with the Supercell Slam. And Rhyperior killing a water type with an electric move is hilarious. So that takes care of the Slowbro, and that just in itself it makes the value of this Rhyperior. So now on the Revenge Switch, they decide to go into the Flygon. So I know that I outspeed, and a Stone Edge is going to be able to do a bunch of damage. Except I miss, and he fucking forgot to put on his glasses once again. And that now allows the Flygon to go for a Dragon Dance. So with this thing starting to set up, I am still behind the Aurora Veil. I have one turn left of it, so I'm going to try to just land another Stone Edge here. It's not going to be very effective, but I actually miss again, because Stone Edge is really hoeing me these days. Now, it allows them to go for a Dragon Rush, which actually you know doesn't do a whole lot of damage, but then my Aurora Veil goes away. And I'm like, well, Rhyperior, you gotta just land this one at least. Maybe a crit knocks it out. It barely is able to live uh, through the Stone Edge. And they're actually able to go for another Dragon Dance here. Now, it's important to note, I actually outsped that thing even with plus one, which means it doesn't have full speed investment, which uh, likely means it had some bulk to be able to take that Stone Edge, which is like, what the hell? <laughs> you land one Supercell Slam, and then you just use up all your luck for the rest of the game. So... With that next Dragon Dance, they are able to outspeed, and an Earthquake is going to uh, take care of me. It's kind of funny rocking a, uh, <laughs> literally a max speed Rhyperior just so that my rock polishes make me faster than stuff, but then we lose that on a little bit of bulk, and that's why uh, at least the Aurora Veil has good synergy here. So, with Flygon sitting at plus two attack and speed, things a little bit scary, but at least remember they do not have the Stealth Rock up, which means that now I'm able to go into the Glamora. And while I know that I can at least take one attack, they're going to have to Earthquake me, which is going to set up some Toxic Spikes. But then, I do not really have great coverage against the Flygon. I have to go for the Sludge Wave. And as they Earthquake here, that does knock me down to one, which is, you know, perfect. Activate that Focus Sash. And then also, we just go ahead and sprinkle some Poison Tip Legos over there, which has got to be the worst possible thing to step on. And I can go for the Sludge Wave, hoping that it's going to be able to grab a kill here. It actually does. So... Flygon is not going to be able to grab much of a sweep there. And with that thing gone, feeling pretty good. So, Glamora at this point is kind of just used up as they do have a Yen Mega. I don't have my Stealth Rock set up. I really wanted to try to get some rocks up because uh, a lot of the time these are going to be like a Throat Spray set. And as I go for the Stone Edge, kind of expecting to die there, I realize it's actually going to be a modest Yen Mega, which allows me to outspeed it. And the reason why you run modest is because after one turn you get a speed boost anyway. And as they knock me out with that Bug Buzz, it is going to activate the Throat Spray. So, this Yan Mega is now sitting in a pretty decent position with at least plus one speed, plus one special attack. And now more than ever, I realize it sucks that Rhyperior went down and wasn't able to land two Stone Edges on the Flygon because I would have been able to have a nice little clean sweep. But, we do have our work cut out for us here, and I figure, you know, even at plus one special attack... Miss Maggie's a mustard bitch who can actually take an attack here. I can definitely live at least one because it has to go for something like an Air Slash. And I decided to Mystical Fire just to drop its special attack one stage, knowing it's not going to quite kill. But they actually go ahead and get the flinch with the Air Slash because literally, of course. I take it pretty nicely, but it is a two-hit KO, keep in mind. And that's an unfortunate flinch there. I'm getting unlucky as hell out here. And I'm like, okay, well, that's still fine because I should still have an answer here. I do unfortunately have to let Miss Maggie go down to another Air Slash. I was really hoping for like an Air Slash miss to just kind of, you know, even the old playing field here. But after all these speed boosts, the Yan Mega is extremely scary. And uh, I decide, you know, actually, while I'm probably not going to be able to get the shenanigans I want to off with the Toxapex, I'm actually in a spot here where I know that I can take attacks from this thing pretty much all day. Now, they go for the Air Slash, knocks me down quite a bit, and of course I flinch, because why the hell wouldn't I? And 
at least after the you know the leftover recovery i'm in a position where this thing is gonna have to fire off a ton more attacks to be able to take care of this thing and they probably imagine you know it's a regenerator one so i can just switch out and get all the health back anyway and they decide to just not even play games with it they're actually just gonna switch out the Mega, which is fantastic because i do have that stealth rock up knowing that that thing's gonna have to hard switch back into rocks knocks it right down to half and they're gonna end up bringing in the toxicity on a nice little ice beam which does do a solid chunk to this thing and i feel like we'd be homies we, honestly I toxapex and toxicity should start a band together or something. I don't know what the hell Tox to Pex is going to play, but regardless, I feel like I probably need to conserve the Pex at this point, and uh, they're more than likely just going to go for something like an overdrive or just an electric move here, and that allows me to go into the Ninetales. I don't have high hopes that I'm going to be able to take an attack here, but if I can, I'm going to be positioned at least way better. So as they go for the overdrive, I actually am able to live, and that is because Alola Ninetales is just purely the GOAT. This thing is actually insane what is the special defense on this fool it's actually rocking a base 100 spadef which allows me to live that not only that but also outspeed and set up a nice little aurora veil for the road now i have the light clay that's going to stick around for eight turns and that just might be what i need to try to be able to pull this game around so they do finish me off there with one more attack um, but at least i do still have the high dragon here and this thing has the potential, especially behind this Aurora Veil, uh, to pull it back for us. So they're down to three mons left, and I realized that after a scale shot speed boost, I should be positioned well enough to bring it home. So I go for that scale shot with that loaded dice, guarantees at least four hits, and that does take care of the toxicity. So with that gone, now they are down to, they have a Serral Edge, and then they have that Yan Mega left. So as I get that defense drop, that's totally fine. Again, we're just out here losing scales, which I don't look like the scaliest guy in general. I look kind of smooth, but they, we throw some scales around and now we lose right, some defense and gain some speed. So they are going to go into the Serral Edge here. And I decide to go for the Crunch. Reason for that is because I, I think it probably just ends up knocking this thing out. But they're actually going to pull out the late game Terra. They're going to bust out the Terra Steel. And as I was really close to clicking Earthquake here, I realized, damn, I, my ass probably should have quaked. Now, as I go for the crunch, it is going to still hit for some neutral damage, and I should have Dragon Dance, because that is not going to be able to take care of it. And it actually is going to end up activating this thing's Citrus Berry, which gives it some health back. But, important to note, this thing is not going to be weak, weak armor either. I don't know what's up with people not running weak armor on these guys, but a weak armor boost there would have allowed it to be faster. Um, but after a Swords Dance, I am still faster in an Earthquake is just going to be able to take care of it. So, Flash Fire is relatively common, but I was sure that this was going to be a weak armor set, and uh, I feel like I misplayed not Dragon Dancing, but that's able to take care of it. And as the snow goes away, not going to really make a difference. Their final Mon is going to be the Yan Mega. And so, the situation with Yan Mega is it does need uh, a speed boost to be able to knock me out here, but I have the Toxapex in the back to be able to finish it off. And all I need to do is just uh, land a crunch on this thing. They don't go for the protect to get the speed boost. Uh, but regardless, we had the game pretty much because Tox of Hex, you know, behind the Aurora Veil, is going to be able to clutch it. So that's going to be the end of the game. I, there's definitely some misplays on both ends. But regardless, still a fun game with just some goofy-ass teams. And uh, I got one more extra bonus match for you because I figured, why not? This time we're going up against a team that's got some kind of weird potential, right? They have like a... Pomot, which can Revival Blessing, they've got a Cramorant over there, and I don't know what dude's gonna throw at me, so let's go ahead and get into it. Alright, so my opponent's gonna actually end up leading off with the Toad Squirrel. Weird squiggly legs creep me out, and also, what's even worse is I imagine, whenever I see this, I just have PTSD about being spored. I know something's about to be put to sleep, and not having a grass type to be able to switch into that, I figure, you know what, Toxapex is probably... Uh, my best switch in here to just be kind of sleep water. So I'm like, it is nap time for my little peekaboo guy, but instead, I just get earth powered. So my dumbass switches from one poison type to another on a stab earth power, and I kind of paid the price there, because that does a whole bunch of damage, and it's probably not going to be looking great for Toxapex to do any merciless stuff here. Not only that, but they also have the ability to get rid of Toxic Spike. So we're trying to figure out a, a second game mode here and see how I can, who can be the star here. So... Knowing that they're just going to Earth Power again, I realize I have a pretty good spot to just switch into the Miss Maggie here. And we're just throwing condiments all over the place. As they do go for that Earth Power, I am floating above it. And at this point, I figure they probably don't stay in here. Uh, but I'm just going to go for a Mystical Fire regardless. Something's about to take a special attack drop. And uh, they're actually going to end up switching into the Glamora. So, their own Glamora comes in. It is going to be Air Balloon, which is good to know. 
as a uh, mystical fire is not going to do anything to the guy, but we do get the special attack drop, which, you know, is worth something, and we pop the balloon, which is also going to be pretty nice. So, I figured this thing probably just tries to set up Stealth Rock or something here, and I realize if I can actually get Rhyperior in against this, I can, you know, it has a special attack drop, I can take a super effective Earth Power, get a weakness policy, start to Rock Polish, and we're trying to think some turns ahead here. So, as I go into the Toxapex here, they do actually just go for that Stealth Rock, and I'm really kind of just hoping in general that they have, uh, you know, some type of ground coverage with like an Earth Power, and then they can knock this out. Again, I'm just trying to get the Rhyperior in, uh, versus this and that's kind of the thought process so I just go for the hydro pump just on best case scenario I'm able to get it off but they actually end up switching they're gonna go ahead conserve the glamora here and uh, they actually go into the iron treads which feels pretty solid because actually I do connect on a hydro pump I go full stranger things demogorgon on his ass and that is not quite gonna be able to knock this thing out which is unfortunate but I get some huge chip on the guy which feels perfect because Iron Treads is always just kind of ridiculous here. So after some nice little leftovers recovery, I just decide either, you know, they knock me out here or I can just go for an Ice Beam. And if I'm them, I probably go into uh, their Toad Scroll. Uh, and so I'm just like, I'm going to click Ice Beam here as they actually Volt Switch, probably expecting me to switch to try to get a position here. And they're going to go into the Toad Scroll, probably expecting the Hydro Pump to be able to live. But instead, I actually Ice Beam him, and I get some huge damage and turn this thing into a gross popsicle. So, I actually, I get the freeze there, which is hilarious, and that four times super effective damage is not quite enough to be able to take care of it, since it wasn't poison for me to get the Merciless crit, but uh, it does actually stay frozen long enough for me to just be able to finish this thing off. So, honestly, Toad Scroll being taken care of is good, because, you know, looking at this kind of mid to late game, it feels like I can get a position potentially for Rhyperior to, if I can, you know, just at least get a Rock Polish, I can do some pretty good damage. With that thing gone, that's a good check to Rhyperior, and now at least they have to switch into something against the Toxapex and try to get something going here. So, they decide to go into fake-ass fighting Pikachu, and I'm just gonna Hydro Pump. I feel like this thing Revival Blessings because that's literally what these guys always do. And uh, it's basically just a revive button. It comes in, it does go for that revival blessing. It's also going to activate a Lepiberry, which restores the 1 PP to revival blessing, which now allows him to revive two things. Uh, but that's just going to bring that freaking Toad Scroll right back to life. To be fair, it did die unfairly, and it probably deserves another chance there. So it does get revived, and it's going to be now able to come back in later at half HP. So I'm kind of just like, you know what? Toxapex is just rolling at this point. They're kind of forced to, you know, go for a stab electric move to take me out. Uh, but again, trying to get myself a spot to bring in the big man. So they do now go for the double shock. That is going to take care of me, but also it uh, it does get rid of this thing's electric typing, which is you know, used up all of his damn electricity on one double shock. Couldn't be me. So now I realize I can go right into Rhyperior. If this thing has some type of fighting move they want to hit me with, they're just going to go ahead and give me that weakness policy, which would be pretty solid. But I'm gonna rock polish regardless. I know that I can take uh, an attack from that thing for sure. And sometimes all you need is Rhyperior in a spot just to double its speed. Because as they switch into uh, the Iron Treads, it was more than likely gonna be just kind of a, uh, a death fodder switch in. But instead, I'm able to go for that rock polish. And uh, while I don't look like it, I'm nice and polished up. We're both a couple of chrome boys over here and now with my doubled speed i am able to both you know, outspeed the guy and finish it off so down goes the iron treads and we are in still a pretty good position with the rhyperior while i didn't get my weakness policy to activate we're still feeling like i actually should have pretty good offensive power to kind of be able to try to sweep the remainder of this game so as they go into the toad school here uh toad school is pretty damn quick i will say them likes do get going but not going to be faster than the max speed Rhyperior with that Rock Polish. So I decide my best damage here is to try to knock this thing out with an Earthquake. And the best way I can do that is to go for that Terra Ground. It gives me that little extra boost uh, to that ground damage. And uh, I am able to outspeed. And an Earthquake with the freaking Bull Cut on my head is going to be able to finish off the Toad Scroll, even with a not very effective hit. Because Rhyperior, and I cannot stress this enough, is a damn beast. So now they have, you know, a free revenge switch into whatever they like. Bad news is you're not going to be faster than the Perior. So as they go into the Cramorant here, which is a fun guy to see, I decide to click the Stone Edge because I really feel like I'm like, you know, it's either 
either they're gonna go for a Terra or something, and then I'm gonna fuck up with a Supercell Slam. I decide to just go for that Stone Edge, and hey, this time I actually don't miss. Not only that, I actually end up killing it with a crit, which likely didn't matter, but down goes the Cramorant, which is always fun, and we do connect on a Stone Edge for once, which is like a freaking deserved it. So, uh, now they're down to just a few Mons left, they decide to go into the Slither Wing. Things looking cuddly and adorable over there, but I do in fact have to kill it, so I'm gonna go for the Stone Edge here, and this time I miss, because it's literally a 20% accurate move. And that allows them to go for the Flare Blitz, and as they see, that's not gonna do any damage. Rhyperior has a matchup on pretty much everything they have left, and a Stone Edge can definitely kill the guy. They decide they're gonna go ahead and save the lives of their poor Pokemon, and Rhyperior is like, I will spare you today, young friend. So they run, uh, just because the Rhyperior sweep is kind of inevitable, and uh, that is gonna do it for the game. So, listen, thank you guys very much for watching. I'm still having so much fun trying to come up with strategies to showcase for you guys and just showing some, showing off some Pokemon that aren't generally super useful. So thank you guys again, and I will catch you next time. Peace out.